The Lusitania is a ship which many people know of, but not nearly as many people know very much about. This isn't because of a lack of information though. More so, people simply don't care to research her history. Lusitania's design, her career, her sinking, and the aftermath of which have been very well documented, similarly to Titanic. It's just that most people don't care to learn everything about Lusitania's story like they have with Titanic, and so, when you only have the bare minimum of information, it can be very easy to make up explanations for things you don't understand. These theories can be broken down very easily if you are actually knowledgeable about the topic, but most of the time people aren't, and these theories will slowly be accepted as fact if not debunked. This has sadly been the case for Lusitania, as many ignorant people have spread false information about her and her wreck specifically. Luckily for me, I have actually done my research, so it's quite easy for me to debunk these claims. This is by far the most common myth I've seen surrounding Lusitania, and at this point, it's more or less been accepted as fact among the ship community. So before I explain why this theory is completely false, I should probably explain its history. There are multiple versions, so here's a short summary of the most popular ones. In World War II, the British Admiralty, under the continuous threat of German U-boats, had concluded that, in order to prevent said U-boats from using Lusitania's wreck as a hiding spot, they would destroy the wreck with explosive depth charges. This theory, on the other hand, states that an anonymous British warship had confused the wreck as a U-boat on its sonar, and so it dropped a full load of hedgehog depth charges onto what really was Lusitania's wreck. This is the most popular version of the theory, which states that in the 1950s, the British Navy had used the wreck for practice depth charge runs. All of these theories might make sense at a first glance, but fall apart when taking any sort of critical look. First of all, when it comes to the whole submarines using shipwrecks as a hiding spot story, I have heard this claim before, but can't for the life of me find any information or accounts of it actually happening. Now, I'm not an expert about sonar or about German U-boat tactics, but I find it very unrealistic to assume a submarine could use a shipwreck effectively as a means of hiding. Not only would you not know where you are on the wreck, like if you're on the bow, the stern, or if you're going to make any physical contact, but how would you even detect it in the first place without exact coordinates of the wreck's location? To my knowledge, World War II U-boats did not use active sonar, as there is a high probability that they might be detected themselves. Likewise, the way sonar worked in those days was not like how you would imagine modern day shipwreck hunters using it. Sonar worked on the basis of sound waves to detect things in the water. Sonar systems would send out sound waves, and how long it takes for said sound waves to return to their origin would be used to judge the size, speed, and distance of whatever object you are searching for. There is a reason it was called the ears of a ship. It would be able to detect a U-boat by the sound of its propellers, or the sound of a torpedo tube being fired. Nowadays we have the advantage of seeing every aspect of our targets on a monitor, but until the invention of the side-scan sonar in the 1960s, you could only really understand what was going on down there with the human ear, which has its limits. This gets onto my next point. What is the point of using a shipwreck as a hiding spot when whatever is hunting you can only hear you, not see you? I think whoever created this theory forgot when these events are taking place. This likewise debunks version 2 of the theory, as an active sonar wouldn't be able to detect, let alone confuse, a silent, much larger shipwreck to a loud moving, small U-boat. Now, version 3 has by far become the most well known and accepted version of events. This is for the simple fact that, unlike the previous versions of events, it doesn't fall apart under basic reasoning and there really isn't anything that proves that it did or didn't happen, at least at a first glance. The fact that the British Navy may have used her for target practice is hard to give a yes or no answer to. That was until recently though, when I stumbled across information that definitively proves how not only this version of events couldn't happen, but how the depth charge theory in itself could never happen. This image you are seeing on screen now is an illustration drawn from surveys of the wreck in the 1950s. Unlike other forms of human interference, Lusitania being depth charged would have caused massive amounts of damage to the wreck the moment it took place. Broken glass, twisted steel, wood splinters, etc. would have been all that's left of Lusitania's wreck. As you can see here though, by the 1950s the wreck was still in very good condition, besides minor collapsing and cracking of the hull. As a matter of fact, it was only in the 1980s and 90s when the major collapsing had begun. Now, what kind of force of nature do you think could cause this kind of deterioration? Years and years of this force bashing on the wreck until an eventual structural failure?
I'll tell you. 99% of people who make this argument will always point to the many other similarly sized ocean liners in a better state, such as Britannic, and to a lesser extent, Titanic. I even bet that several people that believe Lusitania is poorly built are typing away that very argument as we speak. Now, without any context, I can kind of understand coming to this conclusion. Lusitania's wreck is in a horrible condition, and compared to a wreck such as Britannic, which is in a very similar situation and sank in a very similar time, or Titanic, which has been on the bottom longer and is in much deeper water than Lusitania. With this very basic outlook, it seems like a no-brainer to assume Lusitania wasn't built to the standard of the other ships mentioned. But yet again, this is a very basic way to look at shipwrecks, as you need to factor in a lot more than just how deep the wreck is or how long it's been on the bottom. Yes, Lusitania is in a very similar state as Britannic in terms of depth, position, and the length they have been on the bottom, but like I mentioned in the previous video, the circumstances of the wrecks vary to a great extent. For one, Lusitania's wreck is exposed to the heavy currents of the South Irish Sea. She has been laying on her side exposed to this force for nearly 110 years, which for any ship could cause massive long-term damage. Going back to that 1950s illustration, you can see that she had been holding up quite well. It was only in the 1980s and 90s when the stress from the heavy currents finally began to cause a structural failure. Likewise, ships aren't designed to lay on their side. When you put these large structures under that kind of stress, they won't be able to hold up to that kind of force nearly as well over a long period of time. When it comes to Britannic, she isn't in an area with nearly as heavy currents, so she obviously is held up better, with coral being able to grow and flourish into an ecosystem. That brings up another point. Lusitania's wreck, unlike Britannic and Titanic's, has been devastated by human interference, either intentional or accidental. Fishermen of the Kia Channel know of Britannic's location, and generally try to fish away from the wreck. Most fishermen off the South Irish coast, though, aren't aware of Lusitania's wreck, and a lot of the time have ended up getting their fishing nets tangled in the wreck. In many cases attempting to free their nets, they have inadvertently caused more damage to the wreck. In one case, a fisherman literally ripped off one of the ship's lifeboat davits, which is now used as a display piece. Salvagers are also a big factor, as in an attempt to recover valuables from the wreck, they have resorted to cutting tools at best and explosives at worst. The first example that comes to my mind is the recovery of the propellers. In the 1980s, salvagers used explosives to blow three out of the four propellers off of the propeller shafts, which has caused the stern to look as it does today, mangled and unrecognizable. I could bring up more examples, but I think you get my point. Lusitania was not built poorly. People who believe she was are denying basic facts and logic. This theory is one which not nearly as many people believe as compared to, let's say, the depth charge theory. This is mainly because of the fact that there is undeniable proof which debunks an ammunition explosion. In 2011, an expedition to the wreck found packaged ammunition in the cargo holds. They did this by first cutting into the wreck with cutting tools, to later find out there was an opening which led to the cargo holds. This did in fact lead to long-term damage to the wreck, but either way, unexploded ammunition was found. Likewise, just like the depth charge theory, there really isn't anything on the wreck today that shows signs of an ammunition explosion. Looking at the general area of the bow, it looks like a bow. Nothing to the sheer scale of something as massive as the ship's ammunition exploding from the inside out. I know this segment is very short, but there really isn't much to say. The sheer fact that packaged ammunition was found on the wreck, as well as that not happening, proves that the theory is false. Most of these theories have been created from a place of ignorance, and even more so for the people that believe them. In the end, I'll leave you with this. Don't mindlessly believe something you hear if you aren't educated about the topic. This is the main reason why groups such as the Flat Earth community exist. You need to do your own research, and in some cases, simply apply a little bit of critical thinking before taking the word of some random person on the internet. I, a so-called historian, have fallen for these false theories for the simple reason that I didn't do my research. This is why I try to do my best to make these videos as accurate as possible. You won't catch me lip-reading off the Wikipedia page of Titanic, or only using one source of reference for an entire video. And if you don't believe me, well, I honestly don't care, you can go watch the Britannic movie.